G'day everyone, Uncle Jojo. Great to see you all again. Today we're going to be talking over form work. We did our site establishment, we've removed our soil, we've done our excavation, we've just put all of our plumbing in and we're finishing off our form work. Now, form work is boxing up a site ready for concrete and slab work. There's several different types of boxings you can do. We've done two different types for you guys to have a look at, and we'll talk over those. More importantly though, let's just quickly talk about the different types of timbers that we're using and the best way to go about it. So a lot of the timbers that we've used is certified plantation pine. Wherever we haven't used pine, we've used plywood. Now, there's two different types of plywood. Always use the proper form ply. Form ply actually has a coating on it. Here's a piece I prepared earlier. Has a, has a coating on it that is non-stick. So it's very, very, very slippery. You don't want to walk on that, you'll actually slip on it. And you'll see there's one on the front and one on the back. Best thing about form ply is that concrete will not stick to it. Here is normal ply, and normal ply doesn't have a non-stick coating on it, and the actual face of the ply can stick to the concrete. Reason being because concrete, when it's wet, will actually absorb into the dry timber, or the ply that's dry, and it'll soak into it, and you can actually rip the whole front face off the ply as you're trying to unbox the slab. So never use face ply or normal timber ply, only ever use form ply. Ply that is actually made for your form work or for your boxing. So let's just talk over the two different types of boxing. One here, we've created a brick ledge. So, so here what we'll have is our brickwork sitting here and then the wall itself will sit here of the house. The brick will come out, it's called a brick veneer. Brick on the outside, timber on the inside. Now. Because it's a green build, we're not just doing a normal brick veneer. What we're only doing is creating the bottom skirt as a brick. This is a slab finish, so we're not going to do a brick veneer all the way up. We're using recycled bricks, and then we're actually going to create an air gap and shiplap, timber shiplap, the sides, and I'll show you that as we go. What we're trying to do is create a thermal mass through the slab, and then use the timber to help the house breathe in the climate that we're in and for the orientation of the build. Walking down here we'll see that we've done a different type of boxing so we've stepped it out here and then the boxing goes all the way up. So that there means then the brick here will go from the ground height up and then our timber wall will come out here. Now the reason I've done two different types of formwork here is this is going to be quite high on this side so due to the height that we're going to need we don't want to step it and then we can actually create a better air curtain for our timber so what an air curtain is if you haven't seen it on one of my other videos is a gap between the internal timber wall and the external cladding system whether that be polystyrene timber cement sheet any of those you want to have that air curtain it creates an area for the house itself to breathe vital to this process is ensuring that we've got all of our things in the correct places so not only am i you'll see that i've got nails wherever we need nails and these is for my plumbing and areas and I've run out extra string lines where we need to but what that'll also do is help me find on the inside of our slab where we're going to be putting things in such as load bearing points so here you can see it's a massive hole that's actually a concrete mass concrete pad so what that is is actually the junction point for a whole heap of our steel beams that come together and then it goes directly down into this area so that the weight that comes down onto that concrete pad then spreads over an area. It doesn't come down into one place and that ensures that we've got structural integrity through the whole build. Don't forget that those steel beams will be holding up that next floor. Over here we've got formwork that's going to be what's called counterlevering out so this is all being boxed off down the bottom you can see that we've got a step there so the bottom section will have a brick and then we've got a step up which will be the house slab so we've got quite a high house slab but we'll also have polystyrene on top of all of these pads what that will do is separate the ground 
from the actual slab. So we're, when we run hydronic heating through, we're not heating the ground, we're actually heating just the house slab. A very big part of installing hydronic heating properly in this area. Thanks for watching. Any questions or queries, flick them over. I'll answer them for you best I can whenever I can. Thanks for watching and stay awesome.